Episode 4 of Ahsoka, known as the Fallen Jedi, has not one, not two, not even three, but four Fallen Jedi. Trust me, we will explain, and we will then get into where Ahsoka is and why this is huge for her story. Alright, can I start by saying that this is probably one of my favorite live action episodes of a Star Wars series. I said it, you can disagree if you like, but you're wrong. Also, spoilers ahead if that wasn't clear. Now this episode is titled Fallen Jedi, which gives us four Fallen Jedi, in a way. Number one, Balin Skull, who fell from his ways as a Jedi post Order 66, even making mention that he has lost faith a long time ago. The next being Sabine, who isn't quite a Jedi yet, but she does give in to the villains in a selfish hope to find her long lost friend. Which I gotta say completely blindsided me, I was not expecting her to turn like that. One of the most important ideologies of a Jedi is selflessness, and yet she chose the path of selfishness. I can't blame her considering her past, but it still hurts. Maybe she thought she had nothing to lose after Ahsoka fell. Which leads me into my third fallen Jedi, Ahsoka, who didn't just leave the Jedi Order, but literally fell in this episode. And as far as we know, possibly died. Again. But we'll get into that because she links up with another fallen Jedi also known as Anakin Skywalker. These two awesome characters and where they are going is going to be the primary focus of this video. So let's start. Where are they? They are within the cosmic force itself, a realm known as the world between worlds. This exact place is somewhat vague. Our first experience into this realm was in Rebels with Sabine and Ezra unlocking an ancient gateway into the world between worlds. This gate was discovered by Imperial forces and uncovered, which revealed artwork of the Mortis gods, which are known as the Ones, and in my opinion equate to what Legends calls Celestials. Now the Ones were introduced back in the Clone Wars with Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka discovering Mortis, or more likely that Mortis found them. Anakin is the main focus of course as the father who maintains balance is growing weak and can no longer contain his son who embodies the dark side. Basically, to give you the quick rundown, things go bad and the son attempts to leave Mortis and wreak havoc across the galaxy, even making aims to destroy the Sith and Jedi. Eventually, the daughter dies protecting the father and the son is killed along with the father in a self-sacrifice that the father deems necessary after failing to control the power of his children. What's most important to this arc in relation to this Ahsoka episode is that Ahsoka is near death after being possessed by the son. She is then brought back to life through the powers of the daughter as she lays dying from a mortal wound inflicted by her brother. This then leads Ahsoka to always be accompanied by what's known as the Morai. This adorable convert is considered to be the spiritual tie between Ahsoka and the daughter. Now this is where things get a little nuts so put on your tinfoil hats because we're going deep into theories and speculation territory. Remember the end of Rebels with Ahsoka standing by her T6 shuttle and Sabine suited up? Oh, that's right, you never watched Rebels. Well, this finale shows us what Dave calls Ahsoka the White. My Lord of the Rings fans out there may know what I'm getting at. Ahsoka the White is seen with a white cloak and white staff. But what's strange is the fact that we never got this in Ahsoka. Instead, we have Ahsoka the Grey, I suppose. And now that we have watched Episode 4, we know that she's fallen to her presumed death. Just like our boy Gandalf, who fell into the Dark Pit, aka Moria, and perished in his fight against a Balrog. Just like him, Ahsoka is transported to a place beyond time and space. Another dimension. The world between worlds. Somewhere she has been with Ezra before. It is here that she is reintroduced to Anakin, or so it seems. Because Anakin wasn't just present as the Jedi we remembered. He is followed up by an ominous Darth Vader theme. My side theory on this is that Anakin will make mention of his dark side, and the fact that he has overcome that part of himself but it still remains as a part of his history. I think him being the chosen one means being something of a balance point. Not all light and not all dark. Something like Bendu being balance. Which is a big part of why the father even wanted Anakin to come to Mortis, so that he could remain and keep the balance of the daughter and son. So I don't think the Anakin we see meet Ahsoka in the final moments of this episode will be Vader. I think he will be a completely whole Anakin but back to Ahsoka, because her story isn't over. I think Anakin is there as a representative of the Cosmic Force, someone to guide Ahsoka through events of Star Wars and ultimately explain to her the path one must take to fulfill their destiny. 
We may even see glimpses of Anakin's past and be shown the inevitability of his fall, something that Qui-Gon Jinn believed the Cosmic Force to have contrived. Qui-Gon had full faith in the Force and one's destiny. So what is Ahsoka's destiny? I don't think it's to die at the hands of Balin, and I don't believe it's where she was before. She is touched by the light of the daughter. Whether she realizes it or not, the light side of the Force is a part of her. This will be a way for the Force itself to bring her back as Ahsoka the White. To complete her mission, which I believe is preventing the destruction of the galaxy. The threat being Thrawn's invasion, or maybe something far worse. Something akin to the Yuuzhong Vong which have negative effects on the Force, something of a null. My Warhammer 40k fans will know what I mean. I can see the Force resurrecting Ahsoka as an embodiment of the Light to fight something as dangerous as the Vong, something that's a threat to the Force itself. Man, I feel like I kind of went on a trip with that one. I legit finished watching episode 4 and sat down and began writing this crazy theory. I'll summarize it here to make it clear for those that may be lost from all that rambling. Basically, Ahsoka is in the world between worlds, the realm of the cosmic force. She is going to be guided by Anakin through moments in time, giving her one final lesson as her master. The force is going to resurrect her as an avatar of the light side of the force. She will then return Ahsoka the White, which bears a resemblance to Gandalf in his return as Gandalf the White. She will complete her task preventing the invasion of the galaxy and its subsequent destruction at the hands of Thrawn, or maybe the Yuuzhan Vong. Quick mention, I believe Jason Sindula, Hera and Kanan's son, will be the one to sense Ahsoka and lead them to recovering her body, whether she will be dead or in a coma is to be seen. I am in shock at how much I enjoyed this episode. If you made it this far, I applaud you. Make sure to tell me all your thoughts on my theory or let me know your own down in the comments section. I think the Ahsoka series is about to get nuts and we're in for a ride. I think it's also fair to say we gotta allow Dave Filoni to cook. I hope you subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and make sure to blast the like button on your way into hyperspace. Have an amazing day, and may the force be with you.